So the third step in this is to open a new Photoshop window. Awesome. So now that we have Photoshop open, again, I'm just going to drag and drop our original Lumion rendering into Photoshop to create a new file. And then I'm going to bring over the Sky Alpha map and the Material ID map from Lumion as well that we exported earlier. And for now, I'm just going to turn those off. So next, I'm going to bring in our SketchUp Diffusion images that I saved out earlier. And you can see, since SketchUp Diffusion includes everything that's in the view port in SketchUp, um, these images need to be resized. So we're going to start by doing that. Um, another way to do this is you could go in and crop these images and make them the same size that way. But I'm just going to do this quick and dirty for now. That looks pretty good. And this doesn't have to be perfect. Again, the cool thing about Diffusion is that you don't have to use every single part of every single image. Um, so that's one thing to keep in mind when you're generating images. If you find one that you're like, oh, I really like the sky in that one, but I wish the water was more like this one, um, just save them both out. And then you'll be able to mask things in and out in Photoshop to create the image that you want. That one looks pretty good. And I'm going to add this third one in here really quick. Awesome. That looks pretty good. So now that we have all of our images in here, let me go ahead and zoom back in so you can see a little bit better. Um, I'm going to start with this first diffusion image. So what I like to do once I have all these in here is just kind of look through them and figure out what it is about this image that catches my eye right away or that I want to keep. Um, so for this one, and you can kind of switch back and forth between the images. I think for this one, this was originally a drone scan that I used to create this model. And so while it looks really good from an aerial view, it's a little bit muddy when you're looking at it in a perspective rendering. So one thing that I want to change is kind of this bank. Um, I think the sky is kind of boring. The trees look a little bit cartoony to me. So those are the things that I like a little bit more about this image that I'm going to try to keep. So. I'm going to start just by creating a layer mask on this. And then I'm going to go ahead and grab my brush tool over here. And I'm going to make sure that my mask is selected. Um, the black is to erase things and the white is to keep them. So I'm just going to start by really quick kind of masking out this area. I know I want to keep the foreground, how it is in the model. This is not super accurate over here, so I'm just going to start getting rid of some of that. Knowing that I want to keep these buildings in the background. I need to keep this parking lot in here for accuracy. Um, and then there's also a little bit of this building in here that you can see. So again, we're going to keep it super quick, super dirty. Um, don't worry too much about the colors. Like obviously this grass in our Lumion model is a lot more saturated than the grass in this diffusion model. We're going to end up changing some of that too. Um, so I think that kind of gets rid of what I wanted. Um, and now you're just going to go in and make your brush a little bit smaller and start cleaning it up. So I'm going to switch to white to bring some of this back in here. Uh, you know, 
there's a little bit of a boardwalk in here that I created that I don't want to keep, so we're just going to try to find that line. And then, and again, it doesn't have to be perfect. I think that, you know, once we start um, kind of bringing some of this in and out, it's all going to start blending together, especially once we um, update some of the colors. So back here, I just want to make sure all of these trees kind of look the same. I don't want it to look super different or have a hard line in there. I'm going to bring this one back in. And what I'm going to do here is I really want to keep the edge of this building super straight. So I'm going to go in and actually grab some of this just so that we're not touching that. And so I'm going to go up here and go to select inverse for now. And that's going to allow me to mask everything kind of right in here. So we just want to bring some of these trees back in. That one, sky. There we go. That's looking pretty good. And then I'm going to bring this tree back in there to make my brush a little bit smaller in here. Get some of those edges. Awesome. And then I know that there's a building up here too that I want to keep. So go ahead and switch this back to black. There it is. So again, I'm just going to la use this lasso tool to get around this building and give it that kind of crisp edge. And select inverse again. Okay, and now that we have that, again, I'm just going to go ahead and bring this tree back in in the foreground. Bring this guy back in. Some of these in the background can come back. And then we're going to go ahead and do the same thing around this building. We're going to lasso it. And there's also an, a new um, smart lasso tool that works pretty well in Photoshop as well. Select the inverse again, and then we're going to start bringing the sky back in this area. And you can see, you know, that building got a little bit wonky in the diffusion layer, so we're actually going to go in and fix that by using the clone stamp tool in just a minute. Again, I think that these trees look a lot better in the foreground, so we'll bring those back. And I'm going to try to get rid of a little bit of this fencing back here. There we go. Just a little bit. And again, you don't need to worry too much about the colors because we're going to end up coming in here and changing some of that out. Um, and then I like to turn this opacity down just about halfway. And then it kind of gives you this kind of more of a blurred effect that makes the two images blend together a little bit better um, without getting super picky. Awesome. So I think that looks pretty good. Um, some of this I want to get rid of though because it looks like this edge drops a off a lot quicker than it does in the actual model. So I'm going to go in and switch some of that out. Um, just super quick. Go ahead and change that to black and I'm going to turn the opacity up again. Um, oops. So 
So we want to keep some of this green area in here. Um, and I'm actually kind of okay with this kind of rock outcropping from the drone scan in there too. Bring this edge down just a little bit, give it a little bit more lawn area, a little bit of a shoulder on that walk. Awesome. And then I'm just going to soften up that edge a little bit. Again, by turning that opacity down, just kind of blurring that a little bit in there. Awesome. So next what I'm going to do is go ahead and clone stamp some of this image. Um, again, just to kind of get rid of this building in here, make it look a little bit better. So I'm going to do that by selecting the actual SketchUp Diffusion image instead of the mask. And then I'm going to use this clone stamp tool. I'm going to make it a little bit smaller. And then I'm just going to grab something kind of up here to bring in. Sure, rasterize it. Oops. That's a little bit light. And again, this is like way in the background, so it doesn't have to be perfect. Um, but we just kind of want to get something in there to make it blend in a little bit better. There we go. And oops, too far over. And then I'm just going to go ahead and grab this color right in here, knowing that we might have to do it a couple times to make it blend a little bit better. Okay, I think that looks okay. Can't even tell. <laughs> so this is starting to look pretty good, um, but I think that I want to go ahead and bring some other things in from the other diffusion images that we have. So I'm going to go ahead and turn this one off just for now and turn this one on. So in this one, I really like these rocks over here. Um, and once I have some of these rocks in here, we're actually going to go in and clean up the railing a little bit more because I want to keep the original railing from the model in this image. So again, we're just going to go ahead and add a mask to this. And I think the only things that I really want to keep in here is like maybe a little bit of this grass in here because that first sketch of diffusion image had like some weird fencing in it. And then definitely some of these rocks in the foreground. I really like that. But I think I prefer the water and the sky and some of the other things from the first image. So I'm going to keep those. So again, we're just going to add a mask and go ahead and start masking some of this stuff out. Um, again, super quick and dirty. This lets a lot of the previous image kind of come through. Um, I really liked this water in here. That's a little bit more calm. I'm just going to go ahead and keep some of these raw. I really like this big boulder, so we're going to keep that. And we're just kind of going to blur some of this other stuff out. Um, get rid of the foreground again. And I think that looks pretty good. Um, I think adding that really kind of adds something to that image and balances out each side. Um, I'm going to go ahead and just kind of see if I want to bring some of these trees in on this side, though. Some of those are nice. Just going to zoom in here. Let me just kind of blur some of these in in this area that I was talking about that has kind of that weird fencing in there. And again, it doesn't have to be perfect, um, especially in this background. Um, you know, I think it's far enough away in the image that you're not going to really focus on it. But I do like that better. I'm just going to add maybe a little bit around that edge. And just a little bit right in here. Awesome. I think that looks pretty good. 
maybe we want to get rid of a little bit more of this fencing in here. And I actually kind of like this lawn color back in there. I think that looks nice. Just going to add some of that. Maybe get in here and start blending some of it out. So again, bring my brush opacity down. Size it up a little bit just so that some of these tree trunks don't get lost in there. Cool. Okay. So I think this is looking pretty good. Um, the one thing that I don't love is these dead trees in the middle. <laughs> so after we clean up the railing, we're going to go ahead and bring in some different trees from a different diffusion image. So this is where I'm going to use these material ID maps. So in this version, I would have used this sky alpha map to mask out the sky, but since we ended up using kind of the trees and some of this other stuff in the foreground, um, I didn't end up using this layer, but again, this will be on a project by project basis. Some renderings you do, this will make it a lot easier. Some of them you may not need it for. So I'm gonna go ahead and turn on this material ID map and just gonna zoom in here. Um, I really wanna keep this railing in the foreground really crisp and clean around it. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to select this layer and then I'm going to go up here to select color range. I'm going to use that tool to go ahead and select some of this stuff in the foreground. I just want to make sure my tolerance is at 25 and then select color range. And I'm just going to go ahead and grab these guys and this railing, and I'm just gonna see, you might have to play with some of these settings to kind of get the areas that you want. Um, that looks pretty good. Um, I'm just gonna go in and make sure that all of this yellow is selected. We might have to turn our tolerance up just a little bit. Or a lot. There we go, that's looking better. And then I wanna make sure that we're grabbing all of this area in the foreground just so that we don't get any weird kind of blotchy areas in our mask. And again, this doesn't have to be perfect. Um, and each image will be a little bit different. So now that I have that selected, I'm not too worried about the stuff up here that's being selected because for the most part, my brush area is just gonna be in here. And then the way that I'm going to do this is I'm going to turn on that first diffusion layer, select the mask, and then I'm just going to take my brush tool, make sure that's black, and make sure the opacity is turned all the way up so that I can keep this railing in here. Here we go, that cleaned it up. Awesome, that looks pretty good. I like that shadow a lot that I got out of my Lumion rendering. And then we're gonna do the same thing on this guy. So since we brought that rock in, we just wanna make sure that everything around it is really clean and crisp. Now we're just going to go ahead and deselect that. Um, and then we're going to go ahead and switch out these trees in the middle here. So I'm going to go start by turning this on. Um, I really like this image that it created because these trees actually look like willows that would be in this area. So sometimes you get lucky and you get the perfect thing. So again, I'm just going to add a mask to this and start with a pretty big brush. Start. Masking some of this out. We don't need any of that. We're going to keep the water and everything. Got to keep my parking lot. Cool. 
Awesome. And then we don't want to lose that building that I already masked out. So I'm just going to go ahead and get kind of close in here. Um, the trees that I really wanted to switch out were just kind of these dead ones that were showing up from the other diffusion image. Um, get kind of in these trees just a little bit to clean it up. And then you don't want this to come out just a little bit more. And you might have to go in and kind of clean up a couple different layers. Um, when you're doing this, you might see something that's popping through that you'd like to clean up. Um, I think that edge of that tree is a little bit better, but we don't want to lose this kind of rock edge in there. There we go. Okay, so I think that adding all of this detail has really helped. Um, this image definitely looks a lot more photorealistic than it did earlier, but what's throwing me off now is just kind of the coloring. So. What we're going to do to fix that is we're going to just make this a normal layer and then I use the selective color tool so under image adjustments and then selective color this actually allows you to change the hue and the coloring of just one color within your image so for this one I really want to kind of play with the greens and tone them back and the yellows and tone those back a little bit more so the two images look a little bit more more cohesive. So I'm going to start by just kind of playing with these sliders and you can see like it is changing the hue of the grass quite a bit. Um, and you want to make sure you're not getting too crazy with it because <laughs> um, you can always add more but you can't get rid of more if that makes sense. Um, we want to kind of darken that up, the magenta is maybe a little bit too much, and then we're going to move on to greens. So again, taking the cyan out honestly helps a lot for these fall images. Um, I want to keep a little bit of green in it, but not too much, and we definitely want to up that yellow color. I don't want it to be too dark because I still want the image to look pretty bright. So that looks pretty good to me. Um, I think that these are starting to blend really well together. The one thing that's standing out to me is this really blue water in the middle. So I'm going to go ahead and mess with these cyan colors and the blue also just to make it a little bit less saturated. And then we're going to go ahead and do the blue as well. We still want it to look like water, but we don't want it to be too much of the focal point of the image. Awesome. So I think that's looking pretty good. Um, one of the other things that is important in this specific photo is that I want the rocks to be kind of a quartzite color, so we're going to add a little bit more pink or a little bit more magenta into those. So I'm going to go ahead and do the same thing with SketchUp, the SketchUp Diffusion images that we've added, um, specifically the ones that are in the river. So we're going to start with this first one. Again, image. Adjustments and then selective color. And for this one, I'm going to go in and choose neutrals. And I'm going to bring this magenta hue up just a little bit. Um, you could make it a little darker, a little lighter if you wanted. Um, maybe we add a little bit less magenta. And we pull the yellow back just a little bit more. And again, each image that you do is going to be a little bit different. Um, I'm going to go ahead and grab the whites too. 
and you can see it's kind of pulling a little bit of the sky, but I think that that's kind of nice to make it a little bit more saturated. Kind of gives it that really saturated golden hour feel. And I think that looks pretty good, but now this giant boulder that I added in the foreground here looks a little bit out of place, so we're going to go ahead and do the same thing for that one. Again, image, adjustments, selective color. Neutrals. Perfect, and you just need a little bit. Awesome. So I think this is actually looking really good now. Um, I'm just going to go ahead and add a Confluence logo to it and then save it out. Just going to resize this to match the image here. There we go. And I'm just going to go ahead and export this as a JPEG. And I'm going to save this as False Park 68 Sketch Diffusion. So that we know that it's the post processed one. So, just to show you guys really quick, kind of what we started with was this raw Lumion image that we exported. And after photoshopping it and using the SketchUp Diffusion extension, we were able to create this. So I think this is really pretty, um, definitely more photorealistic than what we're getting out of Lumion. And I think that overall, it's just a more high quality image than what you're getting out of a straight rendering program.